Hey guys, welcome back to the channel techbeast.org. Um, in my previous video, uh, we have uh, discussed all about Modbus, how it is functioning, and we also did some hands on using our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so uh, today uh, we are going to learn another industrial IoT protocol, uh, which is BACnet. Okay. So BACnet is widely used in building automation uh, and control systems uh, nowadays. Okay, so it's also one of the industrial uh, protocol widely used uh, among industrial uh, devices. Okay, so uh, we'll be covering uh, two parts, part one. So this is the part one. We will talk all about uh, BACnet and it will be uh, quite theory based and we'll also uh, see what is going to be our demo setup. Okay, so in my part two, as usual, I will just show you uh, hands-on. You can uh, simulate your BACnet device, okay, using your Windows machine and then uh, we will go we are going to use a Python module to read the data from the backnet uh, objects okay via backnet IP so let's get into the topic so what is backnet backnet stands for building automation and control network okay so basically it's a network protocol widely used in building automation system okay so mainly to control data exchange between different devices okay so uh, it's an open protocol and no license fee required to use. Okay, so in TechBeast, we mostly talk about uh, open source projects and open protocols. So BACnet falls under this category. Okay, so if you are a device manufacturer or if you want to uh, use uh, BACnet for your uh, projects or something, you don't need to pay any license fee. It's an open protocol. You can just uh, take its advantage and you can build applications. Okay, so basically BACnet is uh, interoperable. This is uh, something important to note about BACnet. Okay, so irrespective of the device brands, Okay, so today there are a lot of big players uh, who's uh, supporting backnet devices. Uh, for example, let's take Schneider Electric, let's take Siemens, let's take ABB. There are a lot and lot of uh, uh, companies and brands are producing this uh, industrial and building automation control devices. Okay, so. Uh, irrespective of what brand it is okay so you can connect any of its uh, any of the brand devices and you can control from one single interface okay so that's an advantage of backnet and that is uh, that's what we call an interoperable which is widely needed in internet of things nowadays okay and backnet supports it actually so backnet is completely scalable okay from tiny single building to global networks of thousands of devices okay so just by monitoring a temperature of a single room to controlling and monitoring of so many sensors of control hvac systems everything in an entire building you can rely on backnet all you need is just uh, extend your devices just install uh, backnet uh, controllers and just bring it inside uh, the same network and you can able to access each and uh, individual devices objects okay and you can read data so that's how simple it is uh, using uh, backnet so basically how BACnet is used. Okay, so if you want to use BACnet, what are all the things necessary first of all? So basically BACnet standard is implemented in below three ways. Okay, so one is a representation of information as an object. So in uh, BACnet, basically all the information, all the data stored inside the BACnet uh, device, right? It is uh, defined as an object. Okay, so basically uh, it's just something like an object oriented programming language. Okay, so we define everything as an individual object. So BACnet also functions as the same way. Everything is uh, will be defined as an object okay each object have different set of properties okay so if let's say if i want to access a temperature sensors and let's say it's an analog uh, input object so uh, in my next slides i will show you uh, what are the widely used list of objects okay so we can um, most of our objects will be uh, depend or most of our bms uh, building management system will be uh, depend on any of these uh, uh, object list okay so let's say uh, let's say for example let's take an analog input okay so that is one object so that analog input will have a property called uh, present value let's say i want to get a temperature of a uh, Analog, uh, of a sensor okay so i will just uh, make a query i'll just get the data okay uh, by requesting for the present value we will see all these things in a demo okay shortly so second is a communication okay so let's say you have two or three backnet uh, devices together in a in your network okay so uh, so let's say there are some alerts or events happening in one of the you know, your management system and this this data has to be passed to the another backnet device to do some actions okay so basically it's all about events and actions happening so the communication has to happen so the communication between backnet supported devices that has to be uh, there okay uh, third is the network technologies of course okay so how you are going to use backnet what protocol what network protocol you are going to use it okay so we will see certain list of uh, network uh, basically supported by backnet and i'll just 
show you uh, what and all the uh, widely used uh, backnet network technologies and in we will focus mainly on backnet ip so today in internet of things everything is ip based okay so we will focus more on backnet ip okay so what is a backnet object as i said so all the information in backnet is represented in terms of an object okay so each object has standard set of properties which describe the status to other devices okay so let's say if i have a backnet device and my one of the backnet device in the network has to request data from another backnet device so what it will do it will just call the object and it will specify what property it wants to read so then it will send the request then it will uh, it, it can get the data from that object for that particular property which uh, it requested okay so that's how it is um, defined in backnet so basically new objects you can create okay uh, or existing objects can be modified accordingly okay so that's uh, be, uh, totally upon the user needs basically a, a, a backnet object represents inputs outputs software and calculations so all these backnet objects basically comes under this three categories okay so each object represents single point or a group of information okay so just as a single temperature point you want to read you can make it as an individual object or just querying one object sending multiple uh, group of informations that is also possible okay so basically these are the 23 uh, these are tw that there are 23 uh, backnet objects which are widely used okay so it's not just limited to 23 there are more than 23 but in today's scenario in building automation and control network these 23 objects are the widely used backnet objects so we will focus more into this analog uh, input object because it's when reading temperature or some uh, devices mostly we will be uh, dealing with this analog input object so uh, here you can for instance you can see the diagram okay so let's say there is an analog object in a backnet device so these are all the properties present value description device type out of service units all these are the properties so let's say i want to uh, get a data uh, uh, of, of this backnet device so i'll just specify the object type as an analog input object and i will um, uh, specify the properties as present value so when i make uh, a request to this uh, backnet device i will get the data as 68 which is the uh, degree Fahrenheit, which is the data stored in this analog input object. Okay, so this is how the uh, backnet devices work and it will send data. Second is services. Basically, the services basically is used uh, for communication between uh, backnet supported devices on actions and events, as I said. Okay. So Backnet def, uh, defines there are th uh, 32 services and they are categorized into below categories. So all these 32 services basically comes under this uh, five categories okay so one is alarm and event so in case if something happened uh, some certain condition let's say temperature goes uh, beyond certain threshold so it will trigger some uh, backnet uh, points or backnet objects or some backnet device to do perform some actions okay so that's what uh, comes under this alarm and event category so which deals with the change in conditions second is file access so uh, read and manipulate files in backnet devices backnet devices will also store uh, files okay so it's uh, just read and manipulate files third is an object access so as I say as we saw in my previous slide okay so we can add we can delete and we can read and modify and write the properties of the objects fourth is a remote device management this is mainly for operators control okay so all these backnet devices will be connected and there will be a separate operations room so the people will be just uh, sitting in there and monitoring uh, one shot what is happening with the entire building and all those okay so it's mainly used for remote device management so uh, fifth category is a virtual terminal services basically this is to establish a remote uh, terminal session with your devices just like an ssh you can think of so within a backnet network you can just reach the device and you can uh, check uh, as per your need so basically all these services uh, comes under this five categories okay so third is important uh, network technologies okay so somehow we want to connect okay so we want to connect this network and we want to create a local area network or we want to create a uh, devices connecting devices uh, for our uh, uh, use case or application okay so basically uh, an appropriate network technology is needed okay to connect all your backnet devices so some of the uh, options here okay they have we have listed so uh, one is ethernet ip okay so this is widely used in internet of things you just need a an ip for your backnet uh, device you can specify an ip address for your backnet device and you can access it via the ip and port number via your client application to read write or you can access it okay from anywhere 
So ArcNAS is another protocol attached to resource computer network. That is another protocol uh, to create a, a local area network uh, for BACnet. Okay, so the speed of this is nearly 2.5 uh, Mbps, okay, which is slightly less than Ethernet, which supports uh, 10 to 100 Mbps. Of course, it's slightly a little bit uh, expensive if you want to do some uh, cabling work, LAN cables, and all those things will be uh, uh, something. Uh, it will take some 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 cost. But it's uh, quite reliable and faster. So MSTP is another uh, version of network technology. MS stands for uh, master slave. TP is a token passing system. So basically, the master device will uh, request for any services or any data. Okay, only if it has a token. Okay, so that's how this MSTP works. Then Lawn Talk is another uh, open protocol which uh, which is basically uh, works on power lines. Okay, so so you can also create a backnet network using this Lawn Talk, but uh, the speed of it is uh, speed of Lawn Talk is uh, 32 kbps to 1.2 mbps. Okay, it's the slowest of all uh, the comparatively all the above three protocols. So right side is a, a simple diagram. So basically how in a in a management building management system how devices will be connected uh, of multiple uh, network and protocol. So ultimately, if you want to convert some a protocol to another protocol all you need is a converter or you can call it as a gateway so here you see uh, there are backnet uh, lan and um, arcnet protocols here backnet lan mstp is there here ethernet to mstp router is there here ethernet to arcnet routers is there so ultimately you can bring everything under backnet lan ethernet by putting all these kind of uh, gateways or devices okay so this is how we can achieve um, interoperability uh, irrespective of the device brands and we can uh, just combine everything it into a single uh, network technology by providing this kind of uh, converters okay so let's uh, drill down a bit into this backnet ip okay as we are focusing more into this ip based technologies in internet of things so uh, we have chosen backnet ip here for our demonstration and even in industries uh, where backnet ip is widely used nowadays so basically backnet ip uses user datagram protocol and it is not tcp okay udp is basically a connectionless protocol uh, tcp is a connection based protocol so UDP based uh, basically have a lot of uh, widely used and it's well supported and it has um, a lot of ISS APIs for um, different operating systems. Okay, so that is one of the advantage of uh, uh, using UDP over TCP. And then uh, TCP has more overhead than UDP. Okay, so the bandwidth and the traffic will be more in uh, TCP uh, required, required in TCP is more than UDP. Okay, and uh, basically TCP does not allow one to many messages, but UDP will support it. So that is one of the main uh, reason uh, backnet IP is basically working on uh, using a user datagram protocol. So uh, backnet IP is connected over uh, IP network of one or more subnets. Okay, so basically if you have a backnet uh, devices which supports IP, you can just uh, connect or put all your devices in one subnet or you can create uh, multiple subnets and deploy your um, backnet devices. Okay, so this will help to uh, segregate your uh, devices into uh, small, small categories and it's it's a uh, well architecture design. Okay, so if, for example, let's say you have multiple, uh, let's say temperature sensor, humidity monitoring systems and other control systems, everything Thing you have means you can just create a, a separate subnet for each of your sensors and you can segregate it so uh, let's see the types of backnet ip communication so uh, there is a backnet there are four types basically backnet ip to backnet ip so which is a which is in the same subnet okay so if you want to talk to uh, devices which are in the same subnet, uh, subnet all you need is just a switch okay because everything is in the same subnet everything is in the same network so each device will be able to find other device just within the same subnet so here the messages are uh, routed using switch so backnet IP to backnet IP, different subnet. This is another scenario. So here all you need is because if you want to route your uh, messages from one subnet to another device, another subnet, uh, you need a router. So uh, we, we need to have the messages are routed using routers and switch here. So we need to work as uh, we work using the combination of both router and switch. So third is a broadcast, which is the same subnet. So here, uh, who is an IM message? This is just a uh, just like a ping uh, in our uh, network terms we can just say in uh, backnet IP this message will be sent so that all the backnet uh, devices in the same subnet will respond okay with their corresponding addresses so that's what happening here so who is an IM message sent across all local subnet to find address of the backnet devices available backnet devices so fourth is a broadcast in different subnet okay it's the same thing but who is an IM message is sent across different subnet to find 
address of the backnet devices basically all our connection types or connection design will comes under this four category when you are using backnet ip okay so basically this is the backnet ip message format okay so basically mac address bip B, uh, bvlci npca apdu so you just need to understand these are all the uh, message uh, individual uh, frames okay forming a message so all uh, even though we don't want to know much uh, into detail about others we just need to understand at least the uh, ip based uh, message uh, packet so okay at least that ip address and udp how the message is formatted okay how it is uh, being sent across uh, different addresses and all those things we need to know so this is basically an encapsulated backnet ip packet okay so here in the ip address the message uh, it will have a source it has a source, source address destination address it has a checksum to ensure that there is no error in your messages okay so we then only the 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 data from uh, source address will be routed to the destination address okay IP header then UDP header basically it has a source port destination port and the length okay of the message and the checksum which is also help to ensure there is no error in the message form message so uh, basically let's say you have an uh, backnet device running on uh, IP address let's say 192.168.1.5 for example and uh, your port number is something like uh, uh, 5 50,000 or 50,001 so then uh, you can just uh, based on this you can just uh, your IP header and UDP header it will help to uh, connect to your backnet IP and it will uh, read or write data uh, to the backnet uh, object okay so that's what really happening uh, inside this uh, backnet so this is just a simple uh, message format and uh, we just no need to focus much into it but this is just for a rough understanding okay so basically this is going to be our setup okay so as i always say uh, if you want to learn something you always need to get your hands dirty okay so so we are just going to uh, create an, um, a backnet uh, device or we are going to simulate a backnet device we are going to write our own program in our in our next video i'll just show you uh, how you can do all those things you can read the data from a backnet simulator okay so we will be using uh, a software called abe which is uh, uh, it's 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 called it another backnet explorer it's a free software which is available for both windows and linux okay so you can uh, download it i'll just uh, put the link in the description later so i uh, will just install it in my in my windows machine and I, it will simulate a, a simple uh, room monitoring uh, device which which has a temperature uh, all this data in it okay so then we will use uh, back zero uh, a python module okay so back zero is it's another uh, python module which we will be using and we are going to write a, a script on in python we are going to write a python program to read the objects of the backnet sensor so here we are going to deal with analog input object as i said we are widely used uh, I mean, if you want to read something uh, or get some information, the widely used object is this analog input object. So we will just use the present value property and we will just get the data frequently. So basically the uh, the backnet's default port we will be connecting is uh, 47808, but it's not always necessary. It's up to us totally. We can change it by, by, by default. Uh, uh, the backnet IP will be uh, connecting to 47808. This is just for your information. Okay, so basically we will make a request to uh, this analog input object and we will get this uh, present value and you will get the uh, response of okay uh, of this present value. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Okay, so in my part two of this video, we will just uh, do the hands-on uh, portion of this backnet we will so you will get a clear understanding about how this uh, backnet ip is working and how you can um, get the data from any or any backnet devices okay by accessing its objects so uh, keep supporting us let's make technology easy peasy for everyone thank you